six easy pieces. Let's roll the intro. Universal gravitation. What else can we understand when we understand gravity? Everyone knows that the earth is round. Why is the earth round? That is easy. It is due to gravitation. The earth can be understood to be round merely because everything attracts everything else and so it has attracted it self together as far as it can. If we go even further, the earth is not exactly a sphere because it is rotating and this brings in centrifugal effect which tend to oppose gravity near the equator. It turns out that earth should be elliptical and we even get the right shape for the ellipse. We can thus deduce that the sun, the moon and the earth should be nearly sphere just from the law of gravitation. What else can you do with the law of gravitation? If we look at the moon of Jupiter, we can understand everything about the way they move around the planet. Incidentally, there was once a certain difficulty with the moons of Jupiter that is worth remarking on. These satellites were studied very carefully by Dromer who noticed that the moons sometimes seemed to be ahead of schedule and sometimes behind. Now they were ahead when Jupiter was particularly close to the earth and they were behind when Jupiter was farther from the earth. This could have been a very difficult thing to explain according to the law of gravitation. It would have been in fact the death of this wonderful theory if there were no other explanation. If a law does not work even in one place where it though it is just wrong. But the reason for this was very simple and beautiful. It takes a little while to see the moon of Jupiter because of the time it takes light to travel from Jupiter to the Earth. When Jupiter is closer to the Earth, the time is a little less and when it is farther from the Earth, the time is more. This is why Moon appears to be, on the average, a little ahead or little behind, depending on whether they are closer to, to or farther from the Earth. This phenomena showed that light does not travel instantaneously and finished the first estimate of the speed of light. This was done in 1656. If all the planets push and pull on each other, the force which controls, let us say, Jupiter is going around the sun is not just the force from the earth. There is also a pull from, say, Saturn. This force is not really strong, since the sun is much more massive than Saturn, but there is small pull. So the orbit of Jupiter should not be perfect ellipse and it is not it is slightly off and wobbles around the correct elliptical orbit such a motion is a little more complicated attempts were made to analyze the motion of jupiter saturn and uranus on the basis of the law of gravitation the effects of each of this planet on each other were calculated to see whether or not the tiny deviations and irregularities in this motion could be completely understood from this one law. Lo and behold, for Jupiter and Saturn, all was well, but Uranus was feared. It behaved in a very peculiar manner. It was not traveling in an exact ellipse, but that was understandable because of the attraction of Jupiter and Saturn. But even if allow allowance were made for this attraction, Uranus still was not going right, so the law of gravitation were in danger of being overturned, a possibility that could not be ruled out. Two men, Adams and Lee Verrier, in England and France, independently arrived at other possibilities. Perhaps there is another planet, dark and invisible, which men had not seen. This planet and could pull on Uranus. They calculate where such a planet would have to be in order to cause the 
observe perturbation they send message to the respective observatories saying gentlemen point your telescope to such and such a place and you will see a new planet it often depends on with whom you are working as the whether they pay an any attention to you or not they did pay attention to lever where they looked and the planet and was the other observatory then also looked very quickly in the next few days and saw it too this discovery shows that newton's law was absolutely right in the solar system but do they extend beyond the relatively small distance of the nearest planet the first test lies in the equation do stars attract each other as well as planets we have finite evidence that they do in the double star the stars are also shown as they appear several layers later we see that relative to the fixed star the axis of the pair has rotated that is the two stars are going around each other do they rotate accordingly to newton's law careful measurements of the relative position of one such double star system there we see a beautiful ellipse the major starting in 1862 and going all the round 1904 Everything coincides with Newton's law except that the star Sirius A is not at the focus. Why should that be? Because the plane of that ellipse is not in the plane of the sky. We are not looking at right angle to the orbit plane and when an ellipse is viewed at a tilt it remains an ellipse but the focus is not longer at the same place. Thus we can analyze double star moving about each other according to the requirement of the gravitation law that law of gravitation is the true at even bigger distances in indicated if one cannot see gravitation acting here he has also no soul this figure shows one of the most beautiful thing in the sky a globular star cluster all of the dots are stars although they look as if they are packed solid towards the center that is due to the filability of our instruments actually the distance between even the center most star are very great and they were rarely collided there are more stars in the interior that farther out and as we move outward there are fewer and fewer it is obvious that there is an attraction among these stars It is clear that gravitation exists at this enormous dimensions perhaps like times the size of the solar systems let us now go further and look at an entire galaxy the shape of this galaxy indicates an obvious tendency for its matter to elongate of course we cannot prove that the law here is precisely inverse square only that there is still an attraction and this enormous dimension that pulls the whole thing together one may say well that is all very very clever but why it is not just a ball because it is a spinning and has a regular momentum which it cannot give up at its contract it must contract mostly in a plane it is however clear that the shape of the galaxy is due to the gravitation even though the complexities of its structure has not yet allowed it us to analyze it completely in a galaxy we have a scale of perhaps 50000 to 1 lakh light years the earth distance from the sun is 8 1 by 3 light minutes so you can see how large these dimensions are gravity appears to exists at even bigger dimensions as indicated by which shows many little things clustered together this is a cluster of galaxies just like a star cluster thus galaxy attract each other at such distances that they do are elongated into clusters perhaps gravitation exists even over distances of 10 of million of light years so far as we know gravity seems to go out forever inversely as the square of the distance not only can we can understand the nebula but from the law of gravitation we can even get some ideas about the origin of the star if we have a black cloud of dust and gas the gravitational attraction of the species of dust for one another might make them form little lumps barely visible in the figure are little black spots which may be the beginning of the accumulation of dust and gases which due to the gravitation begin to form stars whether we have ever seen a star from or not it's still debatable 
At the left is a picture of a region of gas with some gas charge is taken 947 and at the region it's another picture taken so 7 years later which shows that two new bright spots has got accumulated has gravity acted hard enough and collected it into a ball big enough that the stellar nuclear reaction starts in the interior and turns it into a star. Perhaps and perhaps not. It is unreasonable that in other seven years we should be so lucky as to see a star change itself into visible form. It is much less probable that we could see too. Cavendish experiment. Gravitation therefore extends over enormous distance, but if there is a force between any pair of objects, we do to be able to measure the force between our own objects instead of having to watch the stars go around each other. Why can we not take a ball of a lead and a marble and watch the marble go forward the ball of lead? The difficulty of this experiment when done in such a simple manner is the very weakness or delay of the force. It must be done with the extreme care, which means covering the apparatus to keep them air out, making sure it is not electrical change and so on, then the force can be measured. It was first measured by Cambridge with an apparatus which is uh, systematically indicated. This was first demonstrated the direct force between two large fixed balls of lead and two smaller balls of lead on the end of an arm supporter by a very fine fiber called a torsion fiber. By measuring how much the fiber gets twisted, one can measure the strength of the force. Verify that it is inversely proportional to the square of the distance and determine how strong it is. Thus, one can may accurately determine the coefficient g in the formula f is equals to g m m1 upon r square. All the masses and distance are known. You say we knew it already for the earth. Yes, but we did not know the mass of the earth by knowing g from this experiment and by knowing how strongly the earth attracts. We can indirectly learn how great is the mass of the earth. This experiment has been called weighing the earth by some people and it can be used to determine the coefficient g of the gravity law. This is only way in which the mass of the earth can determine. g turns out to be 6.670 into 10 raised to minus 11 newton dot m square oblique kg square. It is hard to exaggerate the importance of the effect of on the history of science produced by this great success of the theory of gravitation. Compare the confusion, the lack of confidence, the incomplete knowledge the prevailed is in the earlier ages where there were endless debates and paradoxes. With the clarity and simplicity of this law, this fact that all the moons and planets and stars have a simple rule to govern them, and further that may could understand it and reduce how the planet move away. This is the reason for the success of the science in the following years, for it gave hope to the other phenomena of the world might have such beautifully simple law. What is gravity? But it is this such a simple law. What about the machinery of feet? All we have to do is to describe how the earth moves around the sun, but we have not said what makes it go. Newton made no hypothesis about this. He was satisfied to find what it did without getting into the machinery of it. No one has since given any machinery. It is the characteristic of that physical law that they have this abstract character. The law of conservation of energy is a theorem concerning one that have to be calculated and added together with no motion of the machinery and likewise the great law of mechanics are the quantity mechanical law of for which was no machinery is available. Why can we use mathematics to describe nature without a mechanism behind it? No one knows. We have to keep going because we can find out more than we. Many mechanisms for gravitation has been suggested. It is interesting to consider one of these, which may people have thought for, for time to time. At first, one is quite excited and happy when he discovers it, but he soon finds that is not incorrect. It was first discovered about 1750. Suppose there were many particles moving in space at very high speed in all directions and been only slightly absorbed in going through matter. When they are absorbed, 
they give an impulse to the earth however since there are many going one way as another the impulse all the balance but we the sun is nearby the particles coming towards the earth though the sun are partially absorbed so fewer of them are coming from the earth they are coming from the other side therefore the earth feels a net a impulse towards the sun and it does not take one long to see that it's inversely proportional to the square of the distance because of the variation of the solid angle that the sun substance as we vary the distance what is the wrong with that machinery it involves some new consequences which are not true this particular idea has to be following trouble the earth is moving around the sun would imping on more particle which are not coming from this forward side than from its hind side therefore there would be more impulse given to the earth from the front and the earth would feel a resistance to motion and would be slowing up its orbit one can calculate how long it would take for the earth to stop as a result of this resistance and it would not take long enough for the earth to still be in its orbit so this mach- mechanism does not work no machinery has ever been invented that explains gravity without also predicting some other phenomena that does not exist next we shall discuss the possible relation of gravitation to other forces there is no explanation of gravitation in terms of other forces as the present time it is not an expect of electricity or anything like that so we have no explanation however gravitation and other forces are very similar and it is interesting to note analogous for example the force of electricity between two charged objects looks just like the law of gravitation the force of electricity is a constant with a minus sign time the product of the charge and varies inversely as the square of the distance it is in the opposite direction like ripple but it is still not very remarkable that the two laws involve the same function of distance perhaps gravitation and electricity are much more closely related that we think many attempts have been made to unify them the so called unified field theory is only a very elegant attempt to combine electricity and gravitation but in comparing gravitation and electricity the most interesting thing is the relative strength of the force any theory that contains them both must also deduce how strong the gravity is if we take in some natural units the repulsion of two electrons due to electricity and the attraction of the two electrons due to their mass we can measure the ratio of electrical repulsion to the gravitation attraction the ratio is independent of the distance and is a fundamental constant of nature the ratio is shown the gravitational attraction relative to the electrical repulsion between two electrons is divided by 4.17 into 10 raised to 42 the equation is where does such a large number come from it is not accidentally like the ratio of the volume of the earth to the earth of sphere we have considered two natural aspect of the same thing an electron the, this fantastic number is a natural constant so it involves something deep in nature where could such a tremendous number come from some say that we shall one day find the universe equation and in it one of the root will be this number it is very difficult to find an equation for which such a fantastic number is natural root another possibility have been to of one is to relate it to the age of the universe clearly we have to find another large number somewhere but do we mean the age of the universe is in years no because years are not natural they were devised by man as an example of something natural let us consider the time it takes light to go across a proton 10 raised to minus 24 second if we compare this time we the age of the universe to into 10 raised to minus 10 years the answer is 10 raised to minus 42 it has a, about the same number of zeros going off it so it has been postponed that the gravitational constant is relative to the age of the universe if that were the case is the gravitational constant would change with time because as, as the universe got older the ratio of the age of the universe to the time which it takes from light to go across as proton would be gradually increasing it is possible that the gravitational constant is changing with time of course the change would be so small that it is quite difficult to be sure one test which we can think of is to determine what would have been the effect on of the changes during the past 
टेन रेस टू नाइन ईयर्स विच इज एंड वन टेंथ ऑफ द एज ऑफ द यूनिवर्स इन दिस टाइम द रेविटी कॉन्स्टेंट वुड हैव इंक्रीज बाई अबाउट टेन परसेंट इट टर्न्स आउट दैट इफ यू कंसिडर द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द सन द बैलेंस बिटवीन द वेट ऑफ इट्स मटेरियल एंड द रेट एट विच रेडियंट एनर्जी इज जनरेटेड इन साइड इट वी कैन रिड्यूज दैट इफ द ग्रेविटी वेयर टेन परसेंट स्ट्रॉग द सन वुड बी मोर मच टेन परसेंट ब्राइटर बाय द सिक्स पावर ऑफ द ग्रेविटी कॉन्स्टेंट इफ यू कैलकुलेट वॉट हैपन्स टू द ऑर्बिट ऑफ द अर्थ वेन द ग्रेविटी इज चेंजिंग वी फाइन दैट अर्थ वॉज द क्लोजर इन ऑल दो द अर्थ वुड हैव बीन हंड्रेड परसेंट डिग्री सेंट्रेट हॉटर एंड ऑल ऑफ द वॉटर वुड हैव नॉट बीन इन द सी बट वेपर इन द एयर सो लाइफ वुड हैव नॉट स्टार्टेड इन द सी सो वी डू नॉट नो बिलीव दैट ग्रेविटी कॉन्स्टेंट और वन वी हैव जस्ट गिवन आर नॉट एवरी कन्वर्सिंग एंड द सब्जेक्ट इज नॉट कम्प्लीटली क्लोज इट इज अ फैक्ट दैट द फोर्स ऑफ ग्रेविटेशन इज proportional to the mass the quantity which is fundamentally a measure of inertia and how hard it is so to hold something which is going around in a circle therefore two objects one heavy and one light going around a large object in the same circle at the same speed because of gravity will stay together because to go in the circle requires a large which is stronger for a bigger mass that is the gravity is stronger for a given mass in just uh, the right proportion so that the two objects will go around together if one object were inside the other it would stay inside it is a perfect balance therefore garnen or trigo would find things weightless inside a spaceship if they happen to let go of a piece of chalk for example it would go around the earth in exactly the same way as the whole spaceship and so it would appear to remain suspended before them in space it is very interesting that this force is exactly proportional to the mass with great precision because it is very not exactly proportional there would be some effect by which inertia and weight would differ the absence of such an effect has been checked with great accuracy by an experiment done first by it was in 1909 and was essentially by trick for all substances tried the masses and the weight are exactly proportional within one part in 1 million or less this is a remarkable experiment gravity and relativity another topic deserving discussion in einstein modification of newton's law of gravitation in spite of all the excitement it created newton's law of gravitation is not correct it was not modified by einstein to take into account the theory of relativity according to the newton the gravitational effect is instantaneous that is if we were to move a mass we would at once feel a new force because of the new position of that mass by such means we could send signals at infinite speed einstein advanced arguments which suggest that we cannot send signals faster than the speed of light so the law of gravity must be wrong by correcting it to the take the delay into account we have a new law called einstein law of gravitation one feature of this new law which is quite easy to understand is this in the einstein relativity theory anything which has energy has mass and the sense that it is attracted gravitationally even light which has an energy has a mass when a light beam which has energy in it it comes past the sun that is attraction on it by the sun thus the light does not go straight but it deflected during the eclipse of the sun for example the star which are around the sun should appear displaced from where there would be sun not where not this is not observed finally let us compare gravitation with other theories in recent years we have discovered that all the mass is made up of tiny particles and there are several kinds of interactions such as in nuclear forces etc none of this nuclear or electrical forces has been yet found to explain gravitation the quantum mechanical aspect of nature has not yet been carried out the gravitation when the scale is so small that we need the quantum effect the gravitational effect are so weak that the need of gra- quantum theory of gravitation has not yet developed on the other hand for consistency in our physical theories is not would be important to see whether newton's law modified to einstein law can be further modified to be consistent with the uncertainty principle this last modification has not yet been completed 
लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब टू आर यूट्यूब चैनल एंड स्टेट यून फॉर द फर्दर वीडियोज़